Hey Kilted Warrior here, hope you're having a great day. Remember to subscribe if you enjoy this video, and if you'd like to see more videos covering Elder Scrolls, Fallout and Mass Effect, feel free to check out the channel. Otherwise, let us begin. Blades of the Web Spinner Mephala, the Plot Weaver the teacher of the seven secret arts. She pulls upon the threads of fate, snuffing out life as she plucks at the fate of mortals. Yet every puppet master needs her puppets, her tools, men and women who have accepted her teachings, those who guard the secrets of the web of fate. These masters of secret murder will stop at nothing to please their mistress, for her writ, her word, her will is irresistible, and her champions will only be sated as they cut another life, another fate, short. The Dark One is watching Pawn. Do not disappoint her. The Morag Tong Enforcer The Tong is no stranger to plots, schemes and traitors within its own ranks. With some of the most ambitious assassins deciding that they can master the fate of mortals in their own right, the Queen of Oblivion needs an individual of a particular set of skills to keep the Tong in check. The Morag Tong Enforcer is a merciless professional. To anyone in the Tong, they would appear to be just another assassin, except in writs from the Grand Master. Yet, they have a secret. They truly only answer to the web spinner, for she holds their strings. Should someone displease the Dark One, she shall whisper to this individual a name. They will then ruthlessly pursue the target, whether it's traitors who do not pay proper homage to the Lady of Whispers, or simply of a piece in one of her great plots that needs removal for fate to proceed. Nothing stops this professional from enforcing her whispers, her writ, except their own death. This particular enforcer, Ainat or Shumusa, was a young mur of an Ashlander tribe before the Red Year. He survived the horrors of the eruption of Red Mountain. He scavenged, stole and murdered to survive those first horrible days eventually holding up in an old Daedric ruin. There he survived, and would swear his murderous talents to the service of the web spinner, prostrating himself before her shrine. He whispered the secret incantations, and in that moment she whispered back, a name and a place, before from the shadows approached an individual with a robe and a distinct set of red jewels upon it, proclaiming, Welcome to the Tong, Initiate. The Build The Tong Enforcer is a skilled professional killer. Mephala and the Tong have taught them well, for they are a survivor, resourceful and 
utterly ruthless. Saying the Enforcer is armed to the teeth would be an understatement, for they require tools for every eventuality. Inat carries two swords, a one-handed sword for the pawns and a two-handed sword for ritual execution of his targets or if things get hairy. Of course, his choice blade is the ebony blade. He also carries a dagger for more subtle approaches if required, but he is not afraid to get stuck into the melee. He's a survivor, and taking a few hits simply makes him stronger. Of course, he is no fool, and is quite happy to deliver a well-aimed shot from a distance with an arrow dripping in poison. He wears the iconic light armour of the Tong, liking to keep mobile in a fight. For other specifics, his birth sign that I went with was the Steed. I'm using Mundustar so it grants him extra carry weight, his armour is weightless and he has no movement penalties from the armour he wears. Also via the Elder Scrolls leveling and attributes mod, ESLA, he took the Warrior burst sign as well which grants strength and endurance. Regarding attribute mods, if you use them, focus on strength, agility and endurance with a little bit of speed. For vanilla attributes, you'll be focusing on stamina and health with a little bit of magicka, so very balanced. For skills, focus mainly on one-handed and also two-handed as you will be getting the ebony blade. As with all these builds, you'll want to have some sneak and illusion. No Mafala champion would be caught dead without those. Otherwise, archery is not crucial beyond allowing him to land a poison shot. He dabbles in alchemy for his poisons, but you may simply buy them if you prefer. His magic involves illusion, of course, with spells that are to cause distractions or assist in crowd control. No invisibility here except with potions. As you can see, he's about having many options for combat. He can go spell and sword for crowd control, he can open up a fight with a poison arrow, and for a tough or special target you can draw the ebony blade and get stuck in. Mistress of the Seven Secrets Mephala loves secrets, she loves court intrigue, plots, and she loves finding new and interesting ways to shuffle individuals from the mortal coil. The Mistress of the Seven Secrets is a servant that loves intrigue and murder as much as her patron. She is as comfortable sowing the seeds of discord with words, her word games, 
as she is when wielding a blade to end a life. The great teacher of the secret arts has taught this champion much, for she has proven herself to be the embodiment of much of what the web spinner represents, a master of all forms of manipulation and deceit. If secrets are power, then Idula Dreloff is powerful indeed, for she traffics in secrets. Whether it is knowing of a secret alliance between public foes, or what exactly the gourmet puts into those perfect sweet rolls, she has many secrets, but she also masterfully wields the secrets of murder, for she knows a thousand ways to end a life, but she has found none are better than a dagger and a drop of poison. She relishes the moment when her opponents, thinking they are stronger, only to be weakened by poison, and begin to realise that she will be their end. Striking from the shadows is its own delicious art, but Mafala does love the dance between two foes, each revealing secrets of each move and every emotion, every taunt. Idula will surely kill you, but to witness such impeccable skill is mesmerising still. The Build The Mistress of the Seven Secrets is a very special kind of assassin. She can use stealth to get the better of her foes, but prefers a more direct and entertaining approach. For if something is worth doing, then it's worth doing with finesse and style. Unlike the Enforcer, she is not armed with several weapon options, no, she simply carries a dagger and a sword, as well as a choice selection of poisons. The Mistress is like a viper, she coils around her prey as they helplessly lash out and bears her fangs dripping in venom, and all that is required is one cut to end her foes. She wears a simple set of traveller's garb with light kiting armour pieces in the Dunmeri style, offering limited protection but also allowing her to travel without causing suspicion, as she does love to hide in plain sight. Yet Idula is also a particularly powerful illusionist, but unlike Anat, who uses misdirection spells, Idula, as a true daughter of Mafala, using illusions to whisper the secret words that turn foes against each other. She is a master at pulling strings, and for this we use Odin's spells with command among others to grant her control of her foes temporarily but be sure to not use them too much. Idula doesn't want to bore herself or her patron. After all, giving the enemy no chance is no fun. For the specifics, your birth sign for roleplaying purposes will be the serpent or possibly the shadow or even lady. I went with the serpent as with Mundastar it makes poison stronger. As for the leveling and attributes mod, I picked the Thief to grant attribute bonuses to speed, agility and luck. That is, for your attribute selection, if you use such mods, you want to go speed, agility, personality and either willpower or intelligence. For vanilla, you would be going with largely stamina and magicka and avoiding health. For skills, one-handed, for your blades obviously, make sure to get bleeding for daggers if your perk mod allows it. 
otherwise aim for the blade crits from vanilla. Also illusion of course, sneak as well, but also light armor and some pickpocket as combined with alchemy, later you will be able to plant poison on your targets. I will also note regarding poisons, I am using the poisoning extended mod which allows me to stack multiple poisons onto the single blade as seen in the footage. That said, with this kit, you have decent flexibility but can choose if you want to lean into stealth melee kills or use poisons with a more traditional dueling style to give yourself the edge. Remember to experiment with the poisons. I personally suggest paralysis for crowd control, but also for mages anything that removes magicka or prevents them using spells. And if you really want to cause mayhem with the mistress, use Winter Sun's Mephala ability to control an enemy directly from the shadows, as it is a perfect fit for the mistress of the Seven Secrets. Last The Black-Handed Executioner The Morag Tong prides itself in efficient, lawful executions of the subjects of their writs. Through their actions, balance in Morrowind's politics is maintained. They prevent chaos and vendettas between the great houses from spilling into the streets and causing civil war. Yet, not all Tong are equal. Some are sloppy. There is nothing worse for the reputation of the Tong than a target running down the streets with a dagger in his back and still very much alive. It's bad for business and though the writ can give you legal cover, if you have to use it you clearly are not favoured by the Dark One. Better to make sure they die with the first strike. For the black-handed executioner is a specialist, they do not need a second chance, for they need only one swing. As a wise man once said, all I need is one to cut you in half. Edril Nelith, nicknamed the black-handed by his fellow Tong, takes great pride in his work as an executioner who fulfills his assigned writs with brutal, clean efficiency. Yet it is not all business, for he is a religious mirror who truly believes what he does is more than just sport, but a sacred duty, a ritual that invokes the glory of Mafala as he cleanly cuts the threads that hold a mortal in life. He calls it beautiful murder, his art, a love letter to the Whispering Lady.
The build. The black-handed executioner is a simple mirror. He likes his blades and he knows how to wield them, for he is a sword master at heart. He wields two swords, preferably katanas, but with the ebony blade being his go-to weapon. Unlike the other builds, he generally wears heavy armour as opposed to light armour. I went with the Rhino Beetle armour from the Velofi Armours mod. Remember, he is a bulldozer. He hits hard and he shrugs off blows. He uses no magic generally, but can use some alchemy. As for other skills, aside from the one in two handed obviously and alchemy, he still knows a little about light armour, lock picking and sneaking. He sometimes does want to get to his target without notice, particularly with those of the sensitive urban assignments. But also these skills might allow him to leverage his high stamina with better mobility using light armour. For birth sign, I suggest Lord or the Warrior. I chose the Lord as Mundastar grants resistances that help his tankiness. While for the leveling and attributes, I took the Warrior to grant some extra strength and endurance bonuses. That is, for attributes, you're going to go heavily into strength and endurance. This guy is a wrecking ball and you need to have damage output and toughness but also the endurance will give you stamina. For vanilla attributes, you would mostly be going into health, but you also want half as much stamina. No need for magicka on this one. In the end, it's simple. For Ritz outside cities, you just go in with heavy plate and crush your foes with superior swordsmanship. And for urban Ritz, you stick to the light gear, stealth, and usually your one-handed katana. Play mechanics. A writ of execution. You can run, but you can't hide. Regarding roleplay for all of these builds, the core mechanic will be the writs of execution. Of course, since these are largely built around Skyrim, though they are certainly adaptable to Morrowind, particularly in the case of the Enforcer, which I'm currently using in a Morrowind playthrough. Skyrim's rulers do not acknowledge the writ's authority, so keep that in mind as we discuss this mechanic, though technically Ravenrock and Telmifrin should acknowledge them. The idea is that each character enters Skyrim with a list of names of those they must eliminate. 
feel free to draw up a personalised list with, of course, Nazim at the top. For my characters, I went with the idea that they were hunting Tong traitors, particularly for Inat, the Enforcer. He is attempting to hunt down traitors who, two centuries ago, posed as refugees and have since been scattered throughout Skyrim. They need not to be Dunmer targets, of course, though those are the best options. One clear option, of course, is the Fees Guild has a member who is ex Tong, so keep that in mind. Also, feel free to pick other factions and groups also, so the Dark Brotherhood naturally might be a target. Also, the Tong that you find on Soulstone trying to kill the Redran Counselor with some of the remnants of Thalu can also be targets. Personally, I roleplay them as an offshoot, and Hlalu is trying to disturb the new order of the Great Houses and thus must be eliminated. As for getting the Ritz, I like to roleplay returning to the new Nissus Corner Club, or the Wretched Netch. That is, I roleplayed that these were where I received my Ritz, or you can pray at any shrine of Mafala. This is especially the case with the Enforcer, but also the other builds all have a deep connection to Mafala as well. Also feel free to take vanilla bounty contracts or missive contracts from the missives mod for kills as you can roleplay them as your writs, or you can simply view those as sanctioned side dealings as the Tong tries to garner a reputation and expand into Skyrim. Also, if you really want to get into the roleplay, make sure to pick targets that you befriend first and use the ebony blade so that Mephala will praise you directly. Other roleplay considerations. For other roleplay elements, make sure to roleplay as being devoted to the web spinner by either praying at her shrine before starting the hunt, as it were, and if you're using a religion mod, of course, Mafala would be your main patron, though feel free to also worship Azura and Boethia, or at least help them. They too are valuable teachers and demand respect, especially from Dunmer. Also remember that you can pretend to be just about anyone and say anything as Mafala, and her champions are savvy operators and can blend in if they need to reach their target. So if you're doing a mission that requires you to be out of character, that's no problem, you can just roleplay as a simple ruse of convenience, which Mafala would certainly approve of. For the particular characters here, the Enforcer is meant to be a bit of a loner and prefers to stay away from cities, unless he is seeking a writ or a target of one in those cities. Again, his origin is of a survivalist, so he prefers to stay in the wilds. That said, day to day he acts like a bounty hunter for hire as he waits for his contracts, or more accurately, the whispers. On the opposite side you have the mistress, who likes to pretend to be a travelling merchant, which is partially true as she should become decent at speechcraft as she likes to use persuasion as much as possible. Also be sure to have her do any quests that involve intrigue, especially court intrigue. As for the executioner, he functions as a wandering swordmaster and likes to keep his skills sharp, so he will be quite happy to kill humanoid enemies to feed the ebony blade as well as temper his skills. Also, be sure to take the decapitation perk as it is essential for his roleplay. And for those who are wondering, yes, he is meant to loosely be based on a Warhammer Harganeth Executioner. Final thoughts. Go forth, Initiate. Mephala is watching, and the writ will only be satisfied with the blood of the target. Yet be wary, for the great houses and their champions will be watching, waiting, and if you fail or dishonour the tongue, they will be the least of your problems. Next time, 
We will explore the individuals that have maintained the power of the great houses for generations and make up the greatest warriors, mages and rogues of Morrowind. That said, I hope you enjoyed these builds. For those wondering, I shall be releasing a Mephala and the Tong lore video in the next few days. So remember to subscribe if you want to get a notification of when it drops. Also, the question of the day was, which is your favourite assassin or roguish style guild and why? Otherwise, please stay safe, have a great day, and thanks for watching.